Rhythmic and periodic patterns can be one of the most difficult things to describe when interpreting an EEG, especially in critically ill patients. Fortunately, there is a standardized nomenclature process for describing the patterns that are seen. In this video, we will review the most important components of the most up-to-date American Clinical Neurophysiology Society EEG nomenclature, specifically as it relates to rhythmic and periodic patterns. Many of the images that you'll see in this video are based on this publication, which is an impactful publication and includes additional information besides that included in this presentation. When describing rhythmic and periodic patterns, there are two main terms. EEGers should always go back to these two main terms and understand these very well before describing additional features of rhythmic or periodic pattern. I would advise every EEGer to have a really clear handle on the main overall terms, and this will be the focus of our video today. The two terms relate to two different aspects of rhythmic and periodic pattern. The first main term alludes to the location, and the location of these patterns can be generalized, lateralized, bilateral but independent in both hemispheres, unilateral with two or more independent foci, and multifocal. The second term relates to the overall temporal pattern over time of these abnormalities. They can be periodic discharges, rhythmic delta activity, or spike wave activity. Although EEGers can take any approach to describing these patterns, starting with the first or second term and then combining them, I actually think it's helpful to look at the second term first. It can be very difficult for learners to distinguish between periodic discharges, rhythmic delta activity, and spike wave activity. But the most important thing is the presence or absence of an inter-discharge interval. Periodic discharges consist of discharges that may have varying morphologies and levels of complexity, separated by a clear inter-discharge interval. This inter-discharge interval is the thing that separates periodic discharges, or PDs, from rhythmic delta activity or spike or sharp wave activity. Another important element of any of these patterns is that you have to see six cycles or six examples of these patterns in a row in order for it to qualify as a rhythmic or periodic pattern. Rhythmic delta activity consists of activity in which there is no inter-discharge interval. Here is an example of a very sinusoidal rhythmic delta activity. Spike or sharp wave activity has a spike or a sharp wave that precedes or is associated with each waveform that follows it. Again, there is no inter-discharge interval. We can look at these real-life examples of periodic discharges, rhythmic delta activity, and spike wave activity to illustrate the change. Again, with the periodic discharges, you have a waveform followed by an inter-discharge interval, followed by the waveform, followed by the inter-discharge interval, followed by the waveform, etc. The rhythmic delta activity in this example is continuous. There is no inter-discharge interval. And of course, spike wave, such as this example of 3 hertz generalized spike wave in absence epilepsy, has a spike followed by a wave. Here is an illustration from the terminology document showing two different types of periodic discharges. At the top, you see an example of periodic discharges that consist of delta waves, followed by an inter-discharge interval. At the bottom, you see sharp waves, again followed by an inter-discharge interval. Both of these would qualify as periodic discharges. Here are some conceptualizations of rhythmic delta activity. At the top, we see a pattern of rhythmic delta activity that consists of complex waveforms. Next, we see one that is more clearly sinusoidal with less complex morphology. Next is a pattern that is archiform. You see peaks followed by a sudden change in direction of the waveform to produce this arch-shaped or archiform pattern. At the bottom is a pattern that we would not consider rhythmic. To assess rhythmicity, we look at cycle pairs. That means looking at a pair of waveforms and seeing how similar they are to each other. Each of these waveforms has a cycle length, as indicated here. Rhythmicity is defined by looking at cycle pairs and making sure that the cycle length varies by less than 50% for the majority of these. As you can see in this pattern, there are many cycle pairs in which the variability is much greater than 50%, and this is why this would not be considered rhythmic. Here is an illustration of the difference between spike and wave discharges on the left and sharp and wave discharges on the right. The difference has to do with the duration of the sharpest component. A spike is defined as lasting less than 70 milliseconds from takeoff point to return to the baseline. A sharp wave is defined as something that is less than 
200 milliseconds, but greater than 70 milliseconds, again, from takeoff of the baseline back to return to baseline. Next, we consider the first term. Here is an example of generalized periodic discharges. You can see that these waveforms are of similar amplitude and morphology on both the left and right, and that's why we would define this as generalized. Therefore, we would use the first term G, or generalized, and the second term PDs, or periodic discharges, because of the clear interdischarge interval, and we would call these generalized periodic discharges. These are both examples of lateralized periodic discharges. In the first example, we see discharges that are exclusively present in the left hemisphere and not present at all in the right. Again, there is an interdischarge interval, and therefore we would call these L, lateralized, PDs, periodic discharges, or LPDs. In the other example, we see discharges that are present in both hemispheres, but clearly much higher voltage in the left hemisphere than the right. If discharges or rhythmic delta activity is much more prominent in one hemisphere or one location than another, then we do call it lateralized, but we add the descriptor bilaterally asymmetric. Therefore, we, this is another example of lateralized L, periodic discharges, PDs, or LPDs, and we would add bilaterally asymmetric because they are present on the left but also with a field that extends to the right hemisphere. This is also an example of lateralized periodic discharges. This one is a little trickier to conceptualize, but you can see that there is a lead-in consistently in the left hemisphere, followed by a discharge in the right hemisphere after a specific interval. What's important is that this interval is always exactly the same. And for this reason, we assume that these discharges have a relation to these discharges. And therefore, we would call this lateralized periodic discharges. Because they are present bilaterally, and because there is a difference in the timing or asynchrony of these discharges, we would add the qualifier bilaterally asynchronous rather than asymmetric. The morphology is the same on both sides, but there is a clear lead-in from the left and then discharges on the right. So we would call these bilaterally asynchronous lateralized periodic discharges. Here we see discharges on the left, which are periodic, with an inter-discharge interval. They occur at a fairly predictable interval, at least within 50% of each other for the duration of these discharges. But then we also see discharges in the right hemisphere, which appear to have no relationship to the discharges in the left. Here we would use the term bilateral independent, BI. Because they are periodic discharges, we would use the second term PDs, and we would call these bilaterally independent periodic discharges. Here is an example of some discharges that occur independently in two different regions, but both in the same hemisphere. We have some discharges in the left frontal head region, or at the front of the head, indicated here in red. And then we have a second set of discharges, which appear to be in the posterior head region, indicated in blue. These are clearly independent from each other, and so we would call these unilaterally independent, or UI, periodic discharges. This is a new term in the 2021 nomenclature. This diagram shows a similar example, in which we have periodic discharges in the left frontal region, the left occipital region, but then in addition to these, a third independent focus in the right hemisphere. And for this, we would use the final location term, which is multifocal or MF. So this is an example of MFPDs, or multifocal periodic discharge. There are also a number of additional terms which are important in describing rhythmic or periodic patterns. These are called main modifiers. The first of these is the prevalence of the abnormality over the course of the EEG recording or the epoch. Rare is a term that is used to describe a pattern that occurs less than 1% of the time during the recording or the epoch. Occasional is less than 10%. Frequent is between 10 and 50%. Abundant, between 50 and 90%, and continuous is when the pattern exists for more than 90% of the recording. The duration of the pattern itself, as I said before, needs to include at least six cycles or six discharges. 
but in addition to that, we can use terms to describe exactly how long the pattern goes on overall. This can include very brief runs, less than 10 seconds, brief runs, which are less than a minute, runs of intermediate duration, which are typically between 1 and 10 minutes, long duration runs, which are between 10 minutes and 1 hour, and very long duration runs of, pa of a pattern, which is an hour or more. The frequency of the discharges is described in 0.5 hertz increments. Runs of discharges on the higher end of the recording could be ictal or potentially ictal patterns. As I alluded to before, we do discuss the sharpness of discharges. The options include spiky, which is less than 70 milliseconds, sharp, which is between 70 and 200 milliseconds, again, from takeoff to return to the baseline, sharply contoured, which is greater than 200 milliseconds, but with a sharp morphology, and then blunt, which is more of a waveform with no sharp morphology, greater than 200 milliseconds. The voltage is described in this absolute range, as you can see here, going from very low to high, but then also relative to the overall baseline. It is important to consider the relationship to stimuli. This can be difficult to determine if there is no documentation in the record, but overall, if there is a clear documentation of stimulus of the patient, followed by an emergence of the pattern, we would call that stimulus induced. There are patterns that are terminated or taken away by stimulation, and we would call those stimulus terminated. There are patterns that are spontaneous only, and much of the time it is unknown whether the pattern is stimulus induced or not. The plus modifiers can be particularly challenging, and I will only discuss them briefly here. Only periodic discharges and rhythmic delta activity can have plus modifiers, and these modifiers are intended to indicate that there may be additional elements to the primary pattern. Periodic discharges can have the modifier of superimposed or associated fast activity, superimposed rhythmic activity, or a combination of fast and rhythmic activity. Periodic discharges cannot have the addition of sharp or spiky components because periodic discharges include this in their primary morphology. Rhythmic delta activity can have fast activity, it can have sharp or spiky activity, and it can have a combination of fast and sharp or spiky activity. But of course it cannot have rhythmic activity because rhythmic activity is one of the components of the main descriptor of RDA. Let's briefly look at some examples, but I encourage you to practice these on your own. Again, let's start with the first term, then the second term, and then we can describe any modifiers as needed. Here we see a pattern that is periodic. There is clearly discharges that occur every second or two, and they are generalized. They occur in both hemispheres with roughly the same morphology on the left and right. We would call these generalized periodic discharges. Again, we can apply this term because they occur at least six cycles in a row. Here is another example of generalized periodic discharges. These discharges are roughly symmetrical or similar in both the left and right hemispheres, and they occur periodically. There is an inter-discharge interval. So these are also generalized periodic discharges. Here is an example of generalized periodic discharges with some superimposed fast activity. So again, these are generalized periodic discharges, and we would add the modifier plus F because there is associated fast activity with many of these discharges as illustrated in this box. This pattern is also generalized. It appears to be roughly symmetrical in the left and right hemisphere, but this pattern is clearly rhythmic. There is a continuous rhythmic pattern with no inter-discharge interval. Therefore, we would call this generalized rhythmic delta activity, or GRDA. Here is a pattern that is clearly present almost exclusively in one hemisphere and not the other. Again, there are discharges followed by an inter-discharge interval. So we would call these lateralized periodic discharges. In this case, maximal in the left posterior head region. Here is another example of lateralized periodic discharges. These discharges are maximal in the right frontal region. There is a clear inter-discharge interval, and we can add a modifier of plus F because there is fast activity that is clearly associated with each of these periodic discharges. Therefore, we would call these LPDs, lateralized periodic discharges, plus F, plus fast activity. This one is a little trickier. You can see here, as indicated by the arrows, 
are periodic discharges that are occurring in the left hemisphere, in the left posterior head region. Independently in the right hemisphere are discharges in the posterior head region on that side. Therefore, we would call these bilateral independent. They are bilateral, but they occur independently from each other in both hemispheres. There's an interdischarge interval in the case of each of these discharges, and so we would call these bilateral independent periodic discharges, or BIPDs. Here is an example of a continuous rhythmic pattern which is maximal in the left hemisphere. Again, I would argue that there is no clear interdischarge interval, so we would use the main term RDA, or rhythmic delta activity. It's exclusively maximal in the left hemisphere, and so we would call this lateralized. There are superimposed, sharply contoured waveforms, as indicated by the asterisks, so we would add the term plus S. So this is an example of lateralized rhythmic delta activity plus spiked, spiky component, which is LRDA plus S. Nothing replaces experienced looking at these patterns with an experienced eeg -er. However, your ability to combine both main terms will allow you to identify most EEG patterns with relative precision. I encourage you to look at lots and lots of patterns and go back to your two main terms. You'll be able to describe most patterns with ease.